Book of Genesis, chapter 4, Cain and Abel. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel also brought up the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering he had no regard for. So Cain was very angry, and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why is your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. Cain spoke to Abel his brother, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground, and now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. And whoever finds me will kill me. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest any who found him should attack him. Then Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. When he built the city, he called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. To Enoch was born Arad, and Arad fathered Mahujael, and Mahujael fathered Methushael, and Methushael fathered Lamech. And Lamech took two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other was Zillah. Ada bore Jabel. He was the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all those who play the lyre and pipe. Zillah also bore Tubal Cain. He was the forger of all instruments of bronze and iron. The sister of Tubal Cain was Nema. Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. You wives of Lamech, listen to what I say. I have killed a man for wounding me, a young man for striking me. If Cain's revenge is sevenfold, then Lamech's is seventy-sevenfold. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son, and called his name Seth, for she said, God has appointed for me another offspring instead of Abel, for Cain killed him. To Seth also a son was born, and he called his name Enosh. At that time people began to call upon the name of the Lord. So... This chapter goes over, you know, the whole story of Cain and Abel, you know, the about the murder, uh, the first murder in, well, biblical canon anyway. And there's, there's a few parts that really stuck out with me. Here, I'm going to try and find them. So when Cain brought his offering to the Lord... And Abel also brought an offering. God preferred Abel's offering. Not even that he preferred. He just didn't care for Cain's offering. And then, you know, Cain got very upset about it. Well, he got angry. And the Lord said to Cain, this is uh, 4-6 of Genesis. The Lord said to Cain, why are you angry, and why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? 
And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desires contrary to you, but you must rule over it. So in verses 6 and 7, we see how though the Lord has not accepted Cain's offering, he tells Cain that if he were to do well, he will be accepted. And if he doesn't do well, then sin is like going to find a way in. I believe that's like a very, like, I feel like we can pick value out of that in that if we aren't doing good in the eyes of the Lord, then obviously sin's going to grow in us. So we live for the Lord. It will be easier for us to dissipate sin out of our lives and like to take it away and, you know, like, because we'll just be so focused on making our Lord happy. Well, not even like making our Lord happy, but doing works for the name of the Lord. And when we do that, it's a lot harder for sin to find its way into our hearts because our heart is already so full of God and his goodness and his good message and doing good works for God. And this is like something that I feel like I can apply very well to my life. Like I've noticed in the times where I am the most faithful, when I am deep in the word of God, when I am trying my best to do works, when I'm being kind to others, when I'm serving others, those are the times where I have no desire to sin. But it's when I'm no longer in that space, it's when I'm no longer in that state of trying to do works for God that I will tend to fall into sin. So that's sort of what I'm getting from uh, verse 6 and verse 7 is that doing good in the eyes of the Lord will naturally keep sin out of your life. And yeah, here there was another part that stuck out. Here, verse 24. If Cain's revenge is sevenfold, then Lamech's is seventy-sevenfold. So, Lamech, in this part of Genesis, we hear about how he had killed a man for wounding him. And a, yo a young man, It's this, he's described as a young man who struck Lamech. And it's just, hmm, because of the fact that Lamech acted out of revenge, in a way. Not even revenge, it's, hmm. I don't know, like, there's a thought here that I'm trying to put together. But, like, it, you know, it, it's taking a bit for the brain to move. I have killed a man for wounding me, a young man for striking me. If Cain's revenge is sevenfold, then Lamech's is seventy-sevenfold. So... My brain's kind of taken this into Cain murdered Abel out of envy. We like I feel like we can say that. We can say that Abel was murdered because Cain was envious that the Lord preferred his offering. Lamex was out of perhaps revenge. Lamech's murder was perhaps out of revenge. Or maybe wrath. Or, I don't know, because you could easily justify that's also self-defense. I have killed a man for wounding me. 
a young man for striking me. So Lamech was wounded by this young man, and then Lamech killed him. And if Cain's revenge is sevenfold, then Lamech's is seventy-sevenfold. So perhaps this could be about, you know, forgiving thy enemies. Like, in the Bible, it's, if you know anything about Christianity, then you know, like, forgiving your enemies is, like, a big thing in what we need to do as Christians. And that's, like, usually the hardest part of being a Christian, I feel, for, like, most people, anyway. And here it says why that is so important. Because if Lamech did kill this man out of revenge, out of anger, out of wanting to hurt him after he had hurt Lamech, then Lamech is acting in a way that is very unlike how God wants us to act. And in some ways, it's worse than Cain. Hmm. I don't know. Like, I hope you can see where I'm trying to go with this. I hope you can see, like, where my thought pattern is going. Like, you know, obviously I'm not an expert in reading the Bible or anything. I'm just sort of making these videos and just trying to spread the word out there. But hopefully you can see, like, sort of where I'm trying to like what my angle of attack is here in trying to understand this. Well, I, I'm probably not going to be able to fully comprehend that, but we'll leave it at like, you know, the Cain and Lamech are in some way being connected together here in their revenge. Another thing I want to bring up is verse 20. Ada bore Jabal. He was the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock. So, in the next few verses too, it talks about how like certain sons are the fathers of these broad collection of people. Like, how many people in human history have lived in tents and had livestock? How many people in history have played the lyre and the pipe? How many people have played like trumpets and bronze instruments? You know, like all that sort of stuff, right? So in these verses, God is trying to, exp well, not trying to, like he's God. He, he is explaining. God is explaining how... Well, I don't even know how to talk about this right, but like, you, you sort of get what I'm, yeah. So, it is written here in Genesis that the children of Adam and Eve went on to create all these sort of different things like all these different ways of living all of these different forms of art all these instruments you know like all that sort of stuff i know like i i i would have thought like my brain would have gone deeper into that but like honestly i think that's as deep as my brain can dig for that one. There wasn't really anything else that stuck out. Oh, and actually, yeah, here's another one. Uh, verse 9. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Verse 10. And the Lord said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. So, Cain tries to hide the fact that he had murdered Abel. And God could tell that he was lying. God could hear Abel from the ground. Well, the blood of Abel. 
So, this gives us a demonstration of the fact that, excuse me, this gives us a demonstration of the fact that we cannot hide ourselves from God. Whatever sins we have committed, we will have to attest for them. And the only way to really escape that destruction of sin is repentance and turning to the Lord. But, you know, we don't get into, like, the New Testament stuff until a lot later. But, you know, this, this shows us that we cannot hide our sins from God. I think that's everything I have to say today. Looking through it now, I'm not really seeing much more that I can talk about. Uh, make sure to go read the chapter for yourself too. Come back here with your own thoughts. Like, you know, let's get a discussion going on. Try and dive deeper into these words and understand them. Uh, yeah, that's everything I have to say today. Keep running when no one else is. Have a blessed day.